you very much, Manoj, and wish you all a very good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, the morning seems to be pretty cold. Though the temperature is outside yeah. in the early 30s. <laughs> so I'm sure all of you are safe and sound in your place. You all look absolutely comfortable sitting where you are. So maybe the VUCA world has not affected as badly. Is that true? No, not at all. <laughs> So it has. We are trained to pretend. <laughs> You're trained to pretend. Well, Bollywood is looking for new faces. <laughs> Great. So I'm, as I was sharing with Ram, uh, Deepak and Mangesh the other day, I would also be sharing a few slides with you. So I would have preferred to just talk to you all, but I think slides are going to make the topic a little more interactive, uh, easier to assimilate and digest because some of the graphs or charts that I have cannot be easily spoken, but can very easily be depicted. So just give me a few seconds to share my screen. Well, do you all see the screen? Yes. Sir. yes okay, sir. great. So let's begin now. I have another and uh, Manoj or in Rahul rightly pointed out in terms of questions, but uh, the cost of reputation. I generally do not look at a chat during webinars, uh, not very comfortable to be very honest. So my chat is right now off, but you all can keep typing your questions in the chat. And as I had discussed with Ram uh, during a session that we had a couple of days back briefly, Ram can either decide what questions to take or I would go through the chat at that particular moment. Having said that, in case you feel there is something that you would like to ask or observe or share then and there, instead of just putting in the chat box, you can just raise your hand and we will definitely get back to you. And as I can hear right now or other cannot hear, all of you have muted yourself, that's wonderful. So let's begin understanding what is this VUCA world that was described a few minutes back, what is its impact, what is it that we can do as entrepreneurs, professionals, corporate managers, to manage this VUCA world, which term was rightly pointed out sometime back, was coined immediately after the Cold War. And uh, maybe the US did not know what to do. Like I was sharing a couple of days back also that if India and Pakistan were to be friendly, the politicians of both countries won't know what to do. So let's begin and understand what is it that we can do in this VUCA world. Look at this visual and tell me, the first thought that comes to you, any word that comes to you when you look at this? Speed. Building. Building. Great. Speed. Building. Any more? Movement. Movement. Wonderful. Speed. Buildings. Movement. Nothing else? A blast. A blast. Okay. Blur. Hmm? Blur. Chaos? Chaos. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what am I looking at? Mm. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's exactly that's what VUCA world does to us. Including some of the positive words that came to our mind building. And here I'm not just looking at the word building as a premise, but building something new and building something different. We all know what VUCA world is, and I'm sure all of us are familiar but at the cost of repetition, maybe in a couple of minutes, I'll just take you through what exactly does this term mean and try to understand how does it impact us as business people and professionals. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity are four words that make up the word VUCA. Now, what does each one of them mean? The word volatile simply means that changes that are happening in the marketplace are so rapid and on top of that, unpredictable, that it becomes a little difficult to cope up with those rapid changes happening in the market. That's being volatile. And this is a scenario that uh, does not happen only in the VUCA world, but classic example of this kind of scenario is seasonal changes, though they are pre predictable, or some other changes which we may not be prepared for. So volatility is not a really huge issue in this term VUCA. But moving forward, the second one is uncertain. This is exactly where a lot of people face a problem because it's not only future, it's the future that is uncertain, but more often than not in the VUCA world, even the present is unclear. When I talk about the present, I'm talking about right now, here and now moment, 
because we don't even know what can happen in the next moment. And I'm sure all of us were waiting with a bated breath for 8 p.m. yesterday when Mr. Modi were to speak and wondering what is it that he is going to talk about. And after 30 minutes, I got a lot of jokes on WhatsApp. I said, Bhai sahab, kuch to bolo. I mean, that's the feeling that a lot of people had for whatever reasons. So uncertainty is another aspect where not only your future, but even your present is unclear and uncertain. Then, of course, we move on to complex. Too many interconnected factors. Too many things that one do, does not have any control over and at times is not even aware of. As we go forward and talk about how we can reframe the entire term VUCA to give us some solutions for ourselves, you would realize that it is the complexity of the situation that makes the situation more complicated than anything else. And the last, of course, is ambiguity, which is lack of clarity or awareness about situations. Now, these are four aspects that make VUCA. The question arises, have we not faced similar situations in the past? So maybe I'll take a couple of minutes break to understand from the participants here, how many of us in our business life cycles or whether five years or 25 years have experienced VUCA at some stage or the other? I would like a couple of you to share that briefly. I shared it quite. I felt it Sunil, quite often. Okay. <laughs> it is not, uh, I would say virtually every four or five years, I do uh, come across this uh, volatility, and sometimes it may not be all four together. Yes. But I can make out that it is it is happening in the business. I think it's a cycle everyone goes through. Absolutely, we are not able to uh, pinpoint and say that. But I'm sure everyone has gone through this. Absolutely. Thank you, Kanan, for sharing. We went to, uh, through it in 2000. Okay. When I, input, I'm when sorry, I can't input, see your name. Uh, that's... My, my name is Ashok Gupta. Yes, Mr. Gupta. Uh, we faced this problem in 2000 when all imported company, when we started, we were supposed to stop our manufacturing of air conditioner because all branded company was coming into the India. All right. People used to buy branded AC and we are not being supported by government also. All right. Thank you for sharing both Kanan and Mr. Gupta. Now, as you realize that it's very rare that any one of us as a business person would not have gone through VUCA at some time or the other in our careers. But it generally happens to one of 10 organizations at that same, at time. But in today's situation, very much like what happened to us in 2008, again, the impact was not on all organizations, if you recall, in 2008 also, thanks to Lehman Brothers and the banking failure. Today, the impact of what's happening outside because of coronavirus is literally on every organization, barring a few. And interestingly, in fact, I work with one of one such organization and that person was telling me the other day, said, no effect at all Sunil, in the last seven weeks. I said, you are the luckiest one maybe. You know, there's no impact on your business at all. So when we talk about today's situation, it is the group VUCA, not just the individual VUCA that Kanan would have faced every four or five years or Mr. Gupta faced in way back in 2000, so on and so forth. Moving forward, the first thing that we need to understand is what is the impact of VUCA on us? More often than not, as business people, we always talk about impact from the business perspective. But as a behavioral trainer and a coach, I have always believed that there is a two-pronged impact. One, of course, is on the business. And this impact is something that can be easily expressed, easily talked about. I can always say, well, my, my turnover has dropped by such percentage or the productivity of my people has reduced or I'm losing clients or whatnot. But the second impact, which is on our psyche, which is on our emotions, which is on our feelings, this is very often an unexpressed impact. Not that we do not know how to express, but normally people in India do not express this because of the fear of coming across as vulnerable. Today, of course, we are going to focus more on the expressed impact, but I would like to start with the unexpressed impact. Why is it that we do not normally talk about our honest feelings? And today as leaders, business owners, with teams of whether five people or 500 people, if we are not able to address the second area, which is the impact on one's psyche, it is going to be very difficult 
to manage the first one because the congruence that we talk about will come only when you are being honest with yourself and many others. So here's a small list which can be the impact on business on, and on your psyche. And both, of course, can be overlapped. It is not that they are extremely watertight compartments. I'll give you a minute to look at them, and I'm sure you will be able to relate, if not to many, definitely a few of these in terms of impact on your business and impact on you and your people. On the business front, it paralyzes decision-making process because very often you take decisions based on information and data that you have available. Unfortunately, in a VUCA world, we do not even have enough data to decide on. It increases the chances of people making bad decisions because of sheer lack of data that we have. And of course, jeopardizes long-term projects, developments, and innovation. Whereas on the other side, where you see the impact on one's psyche, destabilizes people, makes them anxious, makes them worried, saps their motivation, plots the career moves. I, I don't know how many corporate managers in the group, but uh, either they would have uh, thought of sacking people or would have thought of how not to be sacked. And it's a fact, it, it's a reality. In fact, the other day I was in, uh, last week was the International Coaching Week, and I was doing a seminar for fellow coaches on the psyche aspect when somebody says, I think we shouldn't sack people. Uh, well, that's a very ideal thing to do. Mr. Modi also talks about it. But imagine if you have lost 20% of your business and you've not been able to produce, how many of us very logically and rationally say, let me not sack people. I may reduce their salaries, but there is a possibility of that happening. And the impact of that is not only on the other person who's being sacked, but it's also on the pers person who's actually sacking the other person because not many of us like people to go and not for their fault. So these are the impacts that you have. Now, first I thought I would spend maybe just five minutes talking about the second aspect, which is the impact on your psyche. I'm sure all of us are familiar with the way our brain functions, but typically in our brain can be divided into three, as you see here, reptilian, limbic, or also known as Olympian brain, and of course, neocortex. Reptilian brain simply is fight or flight. There's a reactive brain of mind. So when you touch, say, a hot vessel and you remove your hand immediately, the reptilian brain is at work where there is some risk that has been perceived. You know it's a risk because it's very hot. And it's an instinctual behavior that we have, which is also known as dinosaur behavior. And most of us, when we get into a difficult situation, initially tend to respond from that. Fortunately, as our other two brains also are equally developed, we don't remain in the reptilian brain. And just to give you a simple example, of, this is what I used to hear from my uncle. He said when my cousin, I mean, they used to live on a fly, in a house which had some kind of stairs. And when my cousin was around three or so, I was not even born then, so it's a story that I've heard. When my cousin was playing and he started falling from those steps, and there were 20 steps good, you know, around 18, 20 feet. And my uncle who was standing at the top of the staircase, when he realized the sun is falling, he just jumped around eight or 10 steps to stop that fall of his son. And in the process, of course, hurt his back badly. What do you think a logical person would do? What would you have done in that situation? Uh, try to rush him to a doctor. That's later. First, you need to stop that fall, right? <laughs> oh, not really sure. Maybe shout it to someone who's over there nearby or someone to just take care. It was a staircase. Nobody is there. Now, okay. if you realize right now, what you're doing is very rational thinking. Yeah. But what happened in that situation was your rational thinking took a back seat. And what my uncle did was the reptilian brain, which is a survival brain, came to the fore and he said, let me save my child first. And in the process, yes, I hurt my back, it's okay. And I'm sure very often, a lot of us have done similar situations, maybe in business as well. Quick decisions, fast actions of maybe sacking someone for reasons of sincerity or lack of sincerity, lack of honesty. And I'm not saying these are necessarily wrong decisions, but not necessarily do they work in all situations. I'll skip the limbic brain because that really does not play too important a role here. And I'll move on to neocortex, which is a rational or thinking brain. And in the VUCA world, while our initial reaction could be from our reptilian brain, 
But as we settle down, which all of us do, we start thinking rationally and start looking at ways and means. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in some time from now. And the moment you're moving on to your rational brain, you're actually looking at this picture, something that a lot of you would be familiar with. This is uh, picked up from Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Very simply, he talks about circle of concern and circle of influence. How many of us have any control over this lockdown, not opening or opening, or control over coronavirus, or control over what's happened to the economy, or even control over 20 lakh crores that have been given to us, but we don't know when and in what shape are we going to get that. Now that we are directly going to get that money in bank accounts, but in terms of support, help, aid, whatever comes to a different people. Circle of concern is all those factors that you have no control over. And it really doesn't help to be there for a long time. Though that's your reptilian brain. But the inner circle, which is a circle of influence, which talks about what is it that you can control? Your actions, your behavior, your words. And this is exactly what we're going to focus on because if you were to look at this visual and just visualize the circle of concern that you have outside, you keep on increasing the circle of concern. And as you see my hands moving, keep on reducing the circle of influence. And you hear people saying things when their circle of influence is negligible or very small. People saying that, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm feeling helpless. I have no control over the situation. While to a large extent, it may be true. But you still have this small influence where you need to start looking at what is it that I can do. A couple of years back, I went through a personal challenge. Well, a huge concern with the family member's health. But one sentence that came from that member was, listen, we do not know what future holds for us. It's uncertain. Why worry about that future right now and spoil the present? Because if we do that, we will not even be able to look at solutions right now. And this coming from a young boy, my son, when it came to me, I said, well, I have no control over what has happened. The only control I have is how it needs to be managed. And uh, touch wood, the situation could be managed. Fortunately, with God's grace, it was a situation that could be managed. And we started looking at our actions, our behavior, rather than looking at what we need to worry about. Having said that, circle of concern is never, ever going to eliminate. People say, will I ever be in a position where I'll have entire circle, a circle of influence? Obvious answer is no, because there is something or the other that's going to worry us and something or the other that is definitely going to be out of our control. And I'm sure all married people in this group can agree with me. Ram, you married? So Very where much. would you place your spouse? Even if she's in the room, you can say that. <laughs> Luckily, she's not. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not in, the, in my uh, influence of control. That's right. I mean, in fact, Lata asked me, can I join the session? I said, no, please. That's the only <laughs> way I could control. But I don't know whether she's already on the session or not. I will check <laughs> that. So, jokes apart, uh, the moment we're talking about circle of influence, it's a paradigm sh shift that happens. So let's define this word VUCA a little differently from what we normally look at. So it's volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Let's replace these words with something different. Volatility can be replaced with vision. Uncertainty can be replaced with understanding. Complexity can be replaced with clarity. And of course, ambiguity can be replaced with agility. Now, these are four aspects that we need to look at to help ourselves manage that VUCA world. Not necessarily come out, but manage. Let's look at each one of them briefly. The first one being vision. Counter volatility with vision. Now, if I were to ask you, how would you define the word vision? I'll just blacken the screen for a second. How would, how would you define the word vision? Uh, someone wants to volunteer? Well, can just uh, one of you can unmute yourself and volunteer if you want. Can I tell? Sure. Yeah. So vision is generally the way we want to look the future. Perfect. The way you would like to look at the future. And if you were to convert this into what we define normally as corporate vision, how would you put it in very simple words? 
what is the corporate vision that all of us have set for our companies, however large or small they are? The percentage of growth. Each year. That's that's more of a mission statement the way I look at. Uh, vision is vision normally does not get into numbers. Normally. Of course, there's a lot of confusion between these two words, vision and mission, and different people use it differently. What would be a vision? So for me, it would be something like uh, where I would want to see myself, say, uh, as an organization where we would see, want to see ourselves 15 years down the line. True. And it, it, it being somewhere linked to our overall purpose of why we have started the company also under personal. Yeah. Wonderful. The, so the purpose and where we want to. Yeah. True. Thank you, Ram. Vision normally talks about the purpose and where do you want to be. Of course, the, the subsets of vision can be that I would like to be number one in an industry. I would like to achieve 30% growth, 50% growth, or I would like to have a turnover of X crores or X billions or whatever. But vision is an underlying statement, the purpose of your business. And in the VUCA world, while our focus tends to be on the immediate survival, one of the important aspects we need to understand is to not miss out on that large picture that you would have created for yourself a few years back. Because the moment you move away from that, your today's actions may not help you take to that vision. And I think that vision is more important than just managing survival today. And I know people I've been talking to, in fact, I'm coaching a company, a small company of 12 people into social media. And this lady has started talking to me, said, Sunil, there's nobody who's spending on social media. I'm thinking of changing my business. And I asked her a question. I said, what business are you trying to get into? I really don't know, but I want to get into a different business. I said, what's your expertise? Knee jerk reaction, reptilian, you know, brain working. I said, what is your vision? Look at that vision and work within that vision itself, instead of changing and moving on to a different platform, unless you feel the industry in which you are is going to be a dead industry in the times to come, which is definitely not the case. So accept and embrace change is the first thing. Then of course is create a strong, compelling statement. And I call it a shared vision. Now, a lot of you as leaders of organizations, if I were to ask you a question, especially in a mid-sized organization, I would not know in terms of uh, turnover, but say any organization between 25 and 100 people. Who generally sets the vision? Who sets the vision for the organization? The chairman. The chairman. Okay. Who owns it? Yeah, for a, for a smaller company, it's typically the, the, the proprietor or the director of the firm. Okay. Uh, for, for ideally, ideally everyone should own it. Should own it. We all know Rah Rahul. Am I right? Yeah. Rahul, you mentioned <laughs> everyone should own it. How do you make them own it? Yeah, yeah. I said ideally everyone should own it. Yeah. True. How do you make someone own that vision that you have created? One of the challenges that most organizations face, however small or big they are, the vision has been either created by the chairperson or it could be a board of directors, or it could be HODs of the organization. We help organizations set visions. We do three days offside where they come up with a vision. One of the things I tell them, before you come for the vision, go back to the ground and find out what is it that your people want. And of course, after creating the vision, go back and communicate, not just what the vision statement is, but what does it mean for each of those people. So when I use the word shared vision, VUCA is the time if your people are not engaged, invested, and involved in the process, you really cannot manage your businesses unless you are a solo business person or a professional working alone, someone like me with no team at all. All right? I just have a boss who pays my salaries. Okay? So what we're talking about is shared vision is very, very important. And this is the time, as you will see, in order to talk about the shared vision, Asking, listening, and being transparent in your communication is very critical. Make sure that you set your goals, but also make them a little flexible. Otherwise, when your goals are very rigid in today's time, the short-term goals, it can create a lot of negativity among people. So brief discussion on vision. Of course, I will take questions on this as we progress. But let me move on to the second aspect, which is you, which is moving from uncertainty to understanding. 
Now, understanding has two very interesting aspects as I talk about. And uh, I focus a lot on understanding people. So let me focus on that. Uh, how do you define the word listening? The very simple word that all of us use every day. How do you define the word listening? Uh, listening to understand, not to reply. Wonderful. And uh, how do you understand by listening? There's a process. Asking a few more uh, questions. Asking a few more questions, probing, looking around. Listening is not just a conversation, but you also listen to situations around you. So pause to listen and look around, see what's happening. Now let's look at some of the uh, things that one can do in order to change that uncertainty or meeting uncertainty with understanding. Stay up to date with the industry news and especially what's happening with customers. I'm sure all of us as uh, maybe the businesses are low, but our connect with customers, has that reduced or has that remained more or less the same or maybe increased? Uh, it's reduced, definitely it's reduced. This is exactly where one has to change. Yeah. Now you need to create Wonderful. You need to create situations. You need to create opportunities where you can be in touch with your clients. And you just cannot be calling them every third day and say, Hey, Ram, what's happening? Hey, Karan, what's happening? Hey, Raul, what's happening? Say, yeah, three days before, you asked, why are you asking them? Nothing has changed. All right. <laughs> so what is it that you are doing? Either you are keeping them updated about their businesses, what's happening in their industry, or are you keeping them updated about your businesses? Of course, without bombarding them with too much information. So you decide the periodicity, but the whole point is you are listening to your customers carefully. I mean, I can share with you in the last seven weeks that I have been talking to customers. I made it a point when I have around 30 uh, very active customers, 28 to 30 active customers in my kind of business. And there would be another 100 odd customers that we would have worked in the last three or four years. I think I have finished talking to all 130 customers in last seven weeks. My average is calling three or four people, chatting up for 10 minutes. And sometimes some of these customers I would not have spoken to for last two years. Let me be very honest. Let me be very honest. I've not talked to them because today I'm just sharing with them what's happening with me and what's happening in their business. And thankfully, things seem to be moving in the right direction. The results will not come in the next two months. The results may come after that. So this is the preparatory work that you're doing by listening to your customers, how things are going to change. In fact, we did a webinar for all of our clients and others, which is how learning and development is going to change in the coming time. Human Impact, the company that I run uh, was doing that. We did it a couple of weeks back. So we invited some experts to talk on how learning and development is going to change in the times to come. And all of us as, as trainers, coaches are going to get impacted. Review and evaluate your performance. Consider what you did well. And when we come to a very interesting concept of sign up and model of decision making in some time from now, we will focus a little more on this. Simulate and experiment. This is the time to innovate. This is the time to look at a lot of things that you wouldn't have done earlier. And of course, embrace behaviors and reactions and understand interconnections. Understanding for me, as someone rightly said, is listen with the purpose to understand. And you do that more when you are open to the other person's thought process. And one of the things that we always face as a challenge as business owners, entrepreneurs, or senior corporate managers, I know better. True, but the virtue of my experience, the virtue of my expertise, virtue of maybe my post-graduation from IIMs or IITs, I may know better. But in today's time, there are many others who know the ground reality. There are many others who may know something that I may not know or I definitely do not know. And as you will see in chaotic situation that we will come to in some time, one of the biggest challenges each one of us faces is lack of information or lack of data. Can anybody on this group tell me what is going to be the situation a week from now? For sure. What is going no to be one, no one. None of us can tell. No one. Mean, Mr. Modi may not know that right now because they may be still discussing. And they may take a decision on 15th or 16th saying, okay, here is a situation. Based on this, this is the way we are going to move. And you would realize that when we come to sign up and model of decision making, one of the important aspects in chaotic situation is keep on acting. Keep on acting, keep on acting, keep on acting. So that's what we'll come to in some time. The third aspect, which is C, complexity, you need to 
get to complexity with clarity. Play simple. Go as simple as possible. Today is not the time to look at complicated models. Today is not the time to do things which you will need a lot of time. Because if you need to act, you need to be simple. Uh, I don't know whether uh, any one of you in your businesses, when uh, you realize that your factories are not going to be open, your, your distribution channels may be closed, or your customers may not need your services, what is it that you did or could have done which still helped you, if not generate revenues, but make your business continue? Revenues can come later. Anybody would like to share something where you could see what counts? So in my case, uh, what I shared, what I started doing initially, first two, three weeks was that we started doing a lot of things for free. Uh, wherever okay. people came, I said, okay, this is what you have. Okay, let's, let's do something for you. We didn't talk about billing. We didn't talk about quotations. We didn't talk about anything of those kinds. We just said, let's get started. And, uh, and that's, that's what's helping us to you know, maintain that bond and those people are still active and we are still, and now we are billing them. We are charging them. But initially, we didn't just talk about any of those aspects of we kept it as simple as that, so let's help you just get started. Absolutely. I mean, I think all of us have done that. I mean, I did a couple of uh, free webinars. Of course, they were more for friends and family. In fact, I did not even send that link to clients. But we, we started talking to clients. Initially, they said less rates and all. Now, whether you do it for free or you do it at a lesser price, it's important to really look at keeping things simple instead of complicating it. Apply energy and force exactly where they will be most effective. And the challenge is you would not know what is effective unless you have used it. Because there is no data on which you can rely upon saying that what has happened in the VUCA world. Even someone like Kanan who mentioned that every four or five years there is something or the other that keeps on happening. Or Mr. Gupta mentioned that in 2000 they had a huge issue. Or I remember in 2008 when I was into communication business as well besides being training corporate communication with a team of 35 odd people and we used to do corporate magazines. You won't believe I was on a vacation when um, the recession started hitting the markets. I was in Manali. I remember getting calls in two days from around 13 or 14 of my clients saying, Sunil, we are putting these magazines on hold. And after two days, when I looked at around 1.7 crore of my annual turnover was on hold out of four crores in those days, which is close to 45%, 43, 44%. And with uh, 35 people team, you wonder how you're going to pay salaries, how you're going to do things. So the moment I came back, cut short the vacation, Lata and I came back, we started talking to clients. They said, okay, what do we do? We converted some of those to e-magazines because that was a very new thing in those days. Innovation was the key and we had to keep it simple. A different story that in 2011 for reasons, because it was not very close to our hard business, we stopped that and focused only on training. But Believe me, by 2009, June, July, which was seven months after October 2008, things started coming back to normalcy. So it is the change that one makes in one's business model at that time by keeping it simple for your clients to understand is what really works. Collaboration is key in these situations and collaboration within the organization. As I've already talked about, it is not only the business owner who can focus on things, but it is the entire team. And the last bit, which is ambiguity, has to be fought with agility. Now, this is exactly where a lot of flexibility, and I talk about flexibility in terms of one's approach. How many of you uh, can put your hand on your heart and say that I listen to my employees' suggestions very well? All right, I see one. Sorry. I see one hand going up, but I don't have many people on my screen. So maybe you can respond. Thank you, Varun. How many of you, I see Rahul, Rahul's hand going up for sure. No, there, there's someone uh, sharing his thoughts. Just a minute. Where you say, genuinely, I listen to my team's ideas. Rajiv, you want to share something? No. Uh, Sunil, it is like that. I am a practicing chartered accountant. Yes. So, a lot of practice because it is really a different situation. So, we have one employee and as his article assistant who are the young guys. Right. So, 
they bring in lot of new ideas because i keep on uh, aging but my team age remains the same i mean they are just uh, in the early 20s true in terms of breaking situation so uh, that gives us lot of addressing our clients in a different way true Okay. And Rajesh, you are not very clear, but as I understand from what you said, is that as you work with all of these young articles, to come up with a lot of new ideas, new young blood, you kind of listen to them and uh, implement some of those ideas, provided they are workable ideas. Someone can go on mute, please. I hear a lot of background noise. Thank you. So I, I was talking about listening. You know, this is the time. where you need to embrace the ideas culture are you encouraging ideas from your team are you really involving them and one of the important aspects is allow them to make mistakes because none of us knows what's going to work none of us knows what whether it's my idea or someone else's idea is going to work of course we need to counter risk we need to see how much risk is involved in terms of time money and what not but the moment you allow people to make mistakes you will realize innovation increases people are willing to take those chances because you have confidence that even if they go wrong they are not going to suffer a lot or they are not going to suffer at all i was sharing with uh, ram deepak and mangesh the other day I, i was just chatting up with someone in my building the other day this guy has a small team of eight people in software development and he was talking to me and sunil uh, there's no business in terms of all my clients have asked me to stop and he does customized solutions so he works on customized solutions he said even if there were some projects they've just asked me to put those projects on hold no money is coming but i want to pay my people i don't know from where because i can maybe pay them for a month or max two beyond that is going to be difficult because i also feel what am i paying them for as they are not contributing to the revenue because there's no revenue coming and i don't know how i have never been in this business and uh, when you look at things from outside maybe you are a little more clear in your thought process i asked him a question i said i mean tell me one thing have you ever thought of developing a product of your own but for lack of time or lack of resources never got to do that because your people are busy building solutions for your clients he said yes when we started this company around 6 years back we used to have some plans once in a while the thought comes to me but you know we have ample work at hand and obviously we always keep that on the back burner saying that usko baad mein karenge i said would you like to try that now and he calls me a couple of days later he says sunil i had a long chat with my team this actually happened oh, i was talking to him i think on thursday or friday and he called me on sunday saying that i spoke to my team and we are working on a couple of ideas as it is he had to pay his people he did not want to sack them he did not want to cut their salaries he says i will invest this kind of money salary of eight people but i know the products the two products that we are starting are going to yield us some results 6 months from now now this was ideas the idea could have come from him idea could have come from his team members now, one of the things that happens in fact um, i asked him a question i said i mean tell me did this idea not come to your mind because you have been running this business for so long he said very frankly no but one of my team members suggested he said sir oh do saal pehle aap bole the na product design karna abhi karte hai na i told him chhod yaar kaam nahi hai mere ko dekhne de kahan se paisa aata hai this was his response and it came from me of course i could have charged him a fee for coaching very frankly okay so oh, oh, i would discuss that with him later so what we are talking about is embrace an idea culture initially they may not look good and when ideas come from peer group ideas come from someone senior ideas come from someone who is a coach maybe we are a little more open but today is a time when if i had a team i think i would be open to anyone's idea i say okay tell me what is it that we can do maybe i have not seen it can you see it encourage debate and dissent because the moment you are open to ideas you are encouraging debate and dissent not your ideas are the best ideas and of course last in today's time everyone needs motivation reward people when i told i mean in the same call i said okay now that you are telling me one of your team members suggested in your call with all your team members did you compliment the team member for coming up with that idea maybe you would not have implemented his idea but did you compliment no because you know go oh, strike nahi hua mere ko i said so if you are having a next call in a day or two with them please do so i'm waiting for his call to share with me 
whether he did that or not. What we are talking about is especially people who are showing that understanding of clarity or agility, especially the ability to move really fast, like a football player, as you see in the visual as well. I think it's important to reward because that's going to keep the team motivated and take care of that second impact, which is on one's psyche. Now, this is about these four aspects. I'm going to spend maybe 15 minutes talking about some of the key skills that we need to manage VUCA. But let me take a pause. And in case there is a question or two, I don't mind taking it right now. Uh, maybe we can spend three odd minutes because I see we are fairly in good time. So I don't mind spending uh, a few minutes on taking any questions. Uh, one thing, you know, uh, Sunil, I was just talking to a couple of my friends. You know, one of the guys is very much, you know, interested and he's looking at you know, because of there's absolutely no business, he's entirely getting into something different, which I told him, I don't know whether it was right to tell him, I told him that, you know, it's better to stick to something which is of your core competence, rather than, you know, uh, getting into something totally new, which will require some amount of interaction with people, with the market, with the customers, when everything is closed, you are getting into something and nobody will give you the feedback. So I felt, you know, like, like, for example, we are into uh, medicines, you know, supply of medicines to hospitals and all. Now, hospitals, other than COVID, there is no patient. There is absolutely no patience for any of the other disease. You know, uh, uh, very, very, you know. Surprising. Uh, I'm sure your doctor friends and my doctor friends, I need to have a word with them. <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, they are, so what we did was we got into more of surgicals and PP kits and a lot of things which we were staying away. Because we felt it is a commodity, we don't want to be part of that. Now we are into it in a. Sorry, you went mute, Kanan. Sorry, ah, the sale is coming up from that new segment. True. But that is again what I'm trying to say is it is part and parcel of my core competence, and I'm reaching right. to the same customer. So That's sometimes right. I'm really wondering, you know, whether to invent the wheel at this juncture, uh, getting into something which is totally new and you don't even know how to get the feedback on this. True. Uh, as I said, you know, I talked about this uh, girl who's into social media marketing. I suggested the same thing to her that this is not the time to get into something new unless unless you have the bandwidth yeah. to look at what you're currently doing and also look at something new. So if you have the bandwidth, you know, if you can do that, because, you know, there is something that established. It's like, you know, you're into pharma and pharma, of course, is working or training or any other business, any business hospitality, for example. If today hotels are not a restaurant, now imagine a restaurant owner trying to get into something else unless he has expertise and it's going to take him time. And today to establish that credibility also may take a few months or years. So it, it depends on multiple uh, circumstances in terms of the person's risk appetite, person's bandwidth. So if one has bandwidth available, one can still look at that. But if your bandwidth is limited, even I would feel it's, it's right that one focuses on one's core competence, as you rightly pointed out. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else, any sharing or question? I, I can share something over here. Uh, what I did initially was that uh, we I had plenty of time and uh, initial days even I was wondering what to do. So I didn't want to uh, get too much, uh, you know, uh, uh, take, take the pain of you know thinking, overthinking at that point of time when I didn't know how long the situation is going to last the initial days at least. So I took up to webinars and uh, we took up 10 platform itself as one uh, case study and I said why not spend doing something, time, spend some time over here trying to do what we couldn't do in other uh, busy times actually. And uh, with that I got one of my media companies reaching out to me asking around whether you can host a webinar on for us out there, we don't really understand the technology side of things. Uh, offline events we are perfect at it but online events we are not into it. So I hosted a couple of the webinars for them. And then uh, the, that was on a very, very low key, you know, just as a kind of a technical moderator out over there, not a very great thing out there. But then I got an opportunity from one of the guys who was participating over there to come forward and tell me, Ram, we have four publications and we want you to host the entire thing, not only host, we want you to get even the registrations from the entire event. We want you to manage start to end the entire thing. So that's kind of a complete digital marketing process for us. And that's something a lot more interesting for me, you know, in terms of uh, ticket size as well as uh, uh, it's, it's we getting into a, another league out over there, actually. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we uh, There are multiple things in that way which is opening up. I think, yes, what you rightly said is if you have bandwidth, go ahead and experiment because you never know how those skills and 
things will come across to you in a, in a better way to do some things out over there. But yes, sure. so stay somewhere more closer to your core because I'm still staying closer to web-driven technologies sure. at the end of the day. I'm not still gone out of it completely. I'm just adding few more skills which, which we were not doing earlier. It's related, as you said. Core competence remains more or less the same. Yes. True. Thanks. Any other sharing before we proceed? All right, so let's spend you know, maybe around 15 minutes on this and then towards the end, I'll just talk about that as a leader, how do you need to show up in this VUCA world? The first and foremost thing uh, in today's time is decision making because there's so much of complexity and uncertainty that decision making becomes very, very difficult. And this is exactly where I'm gonna share with you a very interesting concept, which normally takes a couple of hours to understand. We will have to do it in 15 minutes. So I'll go at a little faster pace and keep it as brief as possible, but uh, we can always take it up uh, over a chat or if one on one talk anytime. So first is decision making, which I said we'll come to in a few minutes from now. Innovation, but innovation in something that you already know. You cannot be getting into ways, you cannot be getting into things which you have no clue about and innovation, as I call against creativity, while creativity is the ability to come up with a lot of new ideas, innovation is putting those ideas to work for commercial purposes. So it's very easy to be creative. I come from advertising, having spent 12 years in advertising, uh, I've seen enough creativity when people would come to me, my copywriters would come to me and give me a beautiful line and say, hey, you know, this is great. And I would look at them, yes, but the audience is not gonna understand. And I, I immediately recall something beautiful that one of my copywriters called Ravi Ayer, who went on to be the first RJ of Mumbai, used to call himself Ravi IER, and trains a lot of uh, RJs today. He came to me with a headline, which was for Ratan Motors, a small kind of hours, which said, Ratan Motors canters into Mumbai. Canters was written in italics, because Ratan Motors had taken up the distributorship of Aisha Cantor, you know, the vehicle called Cantor. And Cantor's was written in italics. I said, Ravi, beautiful line. Who's the audience? The transport owners. I said, Kitana ko Cantor word Sanjay ka obol. Tell me honestly, how many transport owners are going to understand? I would like to have a line in Hindi rather. So can you keep it simple? So innovation, I mean, creativity is important. Creativity is the first step. I think it is the innovation, which is putting that creativity to work in a commercially beneficial manner. That's what is a skill that we need to do. And how do you hone that skill? When you allow people to make mistakes, when you are willing to fail, when you're willing to fail. Like Ram mentioned that you tried that webinar or you tried something, you're not sure whether it's gonna work or not. You're not sure. When I, when I announced my first paid webinar four weeks back, I was not even sure whether people will pay. And let me tell you, there were only seven people who paid for that webinar, only seven, because before that I had done three free webinars. But now on an average, I have around anything between 18 and 22 people paying for a webinar, small amounts, but paying and coming. But I was not sure and believe me, when I announced this webinar and for the first one day, there was not a single form coming in. I was discouraged, I said, what the, I mean, what the shit, you know, let me just close this and not even have this webinar kind of thing. So patience. Because creativity or, or you know, innovation is not just going to give you quick results. So that's innovation. The third is creating or searching for opportunities. This is where I th I'm sure uh, somebody who said I started doing things free for clients. Ram mentioned that uh, I did it to some extent. A lot of us may have changed our pricing structure. In fact, at the end of the session, I will have an interesting offer for all members of 10 that I am going to share with you. Make the most of it because uh, I may not keep it open after a month. Let me be very honest. Okay. And then, of course, is implementation, which is acting. And in order to act, you need to work with people and address these VUCA threats at a team level, not at an individual level. And as I said, I'm just going to spend some more time on how do you arrive at decision making. So there's a model called, I'll skip this. There's a model called Sinophon model of decision making, which simply talks about that as leaders and managers, we need to identify how do we perceive a situation 
and how do we make sense of what actions are appropriate for that given situation we all understand situational leadership when it comes to managing people we also use the same concept to manage different situations but this is a beautiful concept that helps you make sense before you arrive at any decision and buka word is time when making sense itself is the most difficult thing to do so let me just take you through this uh, in maybe 10 12 minutes and then i will take questions on this what you see here is uh, four different areas that all of us face in business or in life the first area is obvious as the name suggests something that's obvious mujhe pata hai kya karna hai second is complicated but things are a little more difficult i will spend a minute more on each of these then comes complex where there are a lot of unknowns there's a lot of uncertainty and then there is chaotic when i don't know what's happening so if i were to ask you a question different businesses even in today's time can be in different areas it is not necessary that all of us will be in the same area where do you find your business today all of these i would like at least five or six of you to answer and uh, put your answers on the chat window so that uh, you can have a look okay, let, all of hands let, let me go back to chat as well so for me it is more of please please share your answers on the chat window I'll stop sharing for a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, please, please put it as everyone, and you can share it on the chat window. Select everyone and put it on the chat window. Now let's let's have some participation. Oh, I could have created a poll that would have been faster, but that's okay. I see a couple of people sharing obvious. That's interesting. Complicated. Complicated. Any more answers? great so while others answer a quick question to a few of you who have shared obvious how do you define your business situation as obvious i know what's happening okay uh how do i define it obvious uh, so my mind space is kind of you know email servers hosting etc which which is still critical for any organization even in today's times they don't have it's like the basic electricity that they need yeah something mobile connection and electricity uh, hosting is email and hosting is something very similar for anybody so that's that's a major chunk of my business and so that's why it's obvious at this point of time uh, but yeah if the situation continues for seven eight months i don't know where right now people are paid off <laughs> okay they so can't right afford now, to unplug the, it buka has not hit you yet ram No, uh, not not uh, not the uh, twenty percent of my business, yes, but not eighty uh, percent. That's wonderful. I also see a couple of others sharing obvious. If they can briefly share, why do they believe that their business, the area in which they find their business currently is obvious? And then maybe I'll go to a couple of people who shared complicated. Wow, I got the uh, Vinay sharing that uh, his insurance inquiries are increased. So that's for a change. Some of my colleagues in insurance are complaining that they have not seen an increase in this. They have seen a decrease. No, uh, Vinay, that it's it's heartening to see inquiries have increased. I want to know what is the conversion. <laughs> conversion rate is also increased. So uh, earlier it was earlier it was around thirty to forty percent. So people are in panic mode now. So mm. they are afraid of the situation. So uh, you know. So whenever there is an inquiry, they are you know they are in hurry to take insurance. So whether it is yeah. term insurance or a health insurance. True. So I can see that hurry and uh, you know that worry. So that is why. Uh, that is why the uh, it's obvious that uh, i i believe that uh, i expect that business will increase in uh, future near future and that is obvious for me 
That's right. When, as you rightly pointed out, you know, it's, it's, there are certain businesses in the VUCA world that prosper. And uh, insurance is one of those businesses which you would know pretty well, better than me for sure. So it's not only insurance, there can be many other businesses that prosper in the VUCA world. But in general, people either get into complicated, complex, or at times, Gaurav, you want to share something? Yeah. Uh, so, um, why I feel that my business is obvious because uh, we are into spice mix and uh, we are doing private label for DMART, Walmart, Alliance. So, uh, during COVID-19, uh, obviously people can't go to stores, but they yeah. have online uh, online uh, delivery. So, I'm getting good orders from everyone and I think there's a good scope of growing also from hing into spices and lots of things. So. True. Like you said, innovation doesn't stop and uh, so I think That's there's right. nothing about complicated and complex. So, so I, I have a question, you know, just a question that came to mind right yeah. now for Gaurav and Vinay. What you're doing in the last six weeks or so, did this thought of doing exactly what you're doing in the last six weeks because you are forced from external factors? Did mm -hmm. the thought ever come to you earlier of doing exactly this? So initially, uh, during COVID-19, first we were very worried that this will happen, this will happen. You know, our business will be obviously complex, it will not be complicated. You know, that way I was not, I don't know what will happen. Right. But uh, one more thing, I, did, I never take things for granted. So, when the Hing order came from external, external clients, so I started with the Hing order. So, when it was going, I tried to grow it more and more. So, I uh, I don't think we should be relaxed and take things for granted. If you order are coming, then you can also do something more. So in six weeks, yes, I was I never thought that it will come. But if it comes, then it's a whole chance to use it. Right. So, you know what some of you are talking about? And Vinay, would you like to share anything? I don't, I don't know what people are telling you today to, in order to buy insurance quicker. Could you have done something maybe seven weeks back to make them buy quicker? Something that's making them today buy that insurance much quicker. Uh, the, the lag time in order to arrive at a decision is reduced. What could you have done? Because okay. we all know so, insurance sales on fear. Yeah, sorry, my internet connection is a little unstable, so I'm not sure if you are uh, able to listen to me. Uh, so in last uh, seven weeks, uh, I make I made sure that I had uh, you know I had. Uh, use social media very well i've been uh, posting all the information related to covid and awareness videos and all these things so uh, i tried to utilize this uh, yeah go ahead hello. i can hear you i try yeah, I tried to utilize this time in, you know, just like you said, Ki, uh, you, you you have spoken to all your clients. So I also tried to uh, speak to um, all my individual clients and, uh, you know, uh, made sure that uh, I informed them about the uh, uh, their queries related to COVID in the other health insurance and all the uh, term insurances. So that way I tried to do something extra uh, from my home. Great. Thanks, Vinay. So it's, it's you know heartening yeah. to see that some of us are in businesses which is obvious where we know the answers. Now what I'm going to do is in the next five minutes just quickly take you through what kind of decision making models or what kind of decision making is required in different situations. In the obvious scenarios where you have all the information that you need to take a decision, things are much easier. So you make sense of the situation by understanding what the situation is. You put that situation into a category that it fits in. It's like SOP, standard operating procedures. You have handled things like that in the past. It has happened to you. And you already have the script in which you can manage it. So make sense of the situation. Put that sense in a particular category or where it fits in and respond, which is act. I think this is the easiest situation that all of us as an SOP or when we train our team members to do, oh, this is what is going to happen. If this is a situation, this is your answer. This is like troubleshoot. And troubleshoot is only when we know we have shot that trouble in the past and we have some standard operating procedure. So happy to see that in VUCA world also there are some businesses which are not obvious. But the challenge starts in case of complicated. Where there's a lot of information that's missing. You know what information you need, but you don't have that information. 
And I'm sure today all of us can plan better if we know for how long this lockdown is going to be there or for how long the impact of this lockdown will last, whether it's going to be two months or whether it's going to be six months. Very frankly, when I was talking to some of my clients uh, in, in mid-March when we stopped classroom training and my 90% uh, or other 90% work and 80% revenue is classroom training, the rest is coaching and few webinars that I would do before this 20th of March. Is that they said, Sunil, no classroom training till April. By March and it went to May. By first week of April, it was June. In fact, I was talking to someone this morning. He said, Sunil, I think some of the dates that we have taken from you, July, release them. So I just looked at the situation. I said, till September, I'll work from home. But fortunately, I'm able to make sense. If anything comes to me as a classroom training before September, that's going to be a bonus for me. I'll be very happy. So what we're talking about is in situations which are complicated, you do not even have an answer to certain situations. So you need to make sense where you need to use either your intuition or gut feel. You have to take those chances, analyze the situation, and then respond. The way my response to the situation was, I started talking to them about certain programs or certain webinars, which can be of a longer duration instead of doing a webinar for an hour and a half. Like I designed a six session, six sessions of three hours programs for leadership, which is, you know, more or less ready. And I'm sharing it with them. Is it okay? So we can run it over 15 days or 20 days, you know, at a gap of every three days so that people don't have bombarding of the entire day's webinar. So those are the things. And if the classroom sessions happen in August, fair enough, that stops. Or in the process, I've learned something new. So that's complicated. Complex is a step ahead where you don't even know what you don't know. At least in complicated, you know what you don't know. Here, you don't even know what you don't know. A typical problem example that I can give is drop in productivity of people. You know there is productivity drop, but you don't know why is it happening. It could be issue with the systems. It could be an uh, issue with people. Their motivation could be low. And the only way to come out of that complex situation is probe, ask questions, get into a lot of conversation. And based on the answers that you get, makes sense. Now, this probing can happen either with employees, probing can happen with your customers, probing can happen with your vendors, probing can happen with your family members, a coach, anybody. You know, currently, I'm working with some people who just are bouncing ideas with us. We are listening, suggesting, I work as a coach and a mentor, suggesting what is it that you can look at or what is the best thing? Because as a coach, I've always believed I cannot run someone else's business because someone else knows that, that business better than I would ever know. And I don't even claim to tell somebody else how to run your business. But yes, you can bounce off and look at certain ways which give you a lot of confidence to move ahead. So you probe, ask, talk, then make sense. And then of course, respond. And a lot of things that would make sense to you, a lot of things that the way you would respond could be emerging practices, something that you and I would not have done earlier. And the last situation is chaotic. It was interesting to see that not a single person responded in the seven weeks back, or unless you know people were looking at today's situation. But if I were to ask you a question, seven weeks back when the lockdown started, did any one of you feel you were here where you didn't know what's happening here was anyone in that situation yes sir. i think all of us want to a large extent yeah. because there and the only thing that works ram and others is the first thing that you see act start doing movement is the key and to me movement is doing things and when you're doing things there's a possibility you will fail so one of the important aspects in the VUCA world is, are you acting or are you just thinking? So decision making at least, you know, at, at times can wait. You act, you start doing things as it is you have ample time, as it is you're not making any revenue, as it is your clients don't need you right now, or even if they need you, they cannot afford your services. They cannot pay you for some time. They want to keep money with themselves. So act, make sense of what is working, what is not working and respond accordingly. So these are four areas. Of course, as I told you, this normally takes a couple of hours. I've kept it extremely brief. So just to show you in one slide, the best practice is what you use in obvious cases. You look at good practices 
In complicated cases, you look at emerging practices, something that you wouldn't have done earlier in complex uh, situations. And of course, you look at novel practices. If I were to tell any one of you who have started doing things free for your clients a year back, if your client would have told you, okay, can you do something for me for free? What would have been your answer? I can't afford your services now. Do it free for me. Uh, normally, no. <laughs> normally, you have. <laughs> I don't do anything for free. I would have said, yes, I'd be tied up. Also. I would have allowed to do it, but maybe I'm tied up right now. True. I mean, you still want to be nice. You want to keep that door ajar. Yeah. You want to keep yeah. the window open. Now, this is exactly what changes in the VUCA world. And in today's time, fortunately for most of us, in the last seven weeks, we have moved away from chaotic. We could be in complex or complicated. Some of us, fortunately, have moved to obvious. Though I believe that it's easier to say we are in obvious, the impact of this is going to start showing once the lockdown opens. Once the lockdown opens. So be prepared. There's a possibility that we may move from this obvious to possibly here as well. Now, the last bit before I go to how do you need to show up as a leader, there's some area in the center here where I'm pointing now. Now, the small area is actually the fifth area which normally we don't talk about. In today's time, it will be a little difficult to really focus on that. This area is called disorder. Let's hope we don't know. I would only say that when you go here, there's not really anything happening in the world. But I, I really don't feel quite an optimist about that, that we will not go here. The small area can be disordered. Something that happened in 1920, something that happened in between 1939 and 1944 the war. And uh, I don't think in the last 50 years of my uh, little bit of reading that I've had, we have gone here. So let's hope we don't go in this small area where none of us will know what to do. So before we close, a uh, few things as all of you are people leaders as well, along with looking at decision making, one of the important aspects is connection. Be human. Easier said than done. There's a question of employee satisfaction versus business priorities. My brother-in-law who runs a large media company with 40 odd people, he was talking to me, says, Sunil, I have no option but to cut people's salaries. So this is what I'm doing. Anybody who gets less than 60,000 a month is getting the entire salary. I mean, there are some people who get as much as two, two and a half like a month. He said, anybody who's getting more than 60,000 a month is getting a cut, depending on, you know, you put a slap. He said, and people are still okay with that. They're satisfied. Of course, they feel that pinch, but I don't have an option because we don't, we are not getting any advertising revenue at all. Uh, whereas I was looking at something like 60 crore advertising revenue. And I know that if this year I end up getting even 20 crore, I'll be more than happy. Share your vulnerabilities. Now, this is very critical as a leader. How many of you who have teams of your own admitted to your teams that you are scared, if you are scared? Openly I said. I, 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 I did it yesterday. Yesterday? Okay. Yeah. So we have the web design business, which is under subdivision of ours. So I said, here we are not doing anything. We're not okay. closing projects at the rate that we should. And... Uh, but it was not really, uh, uh, it was a concern, right? Still, so at the end of the day, we can we can be closing and we are not closing. And there's something that we need to be acknowledging. In 40 days, we have not moved ahead of really much here. In this True. So I did it. You know, this is an aspect of emotional intelligence. Another subject that uh, Lata, my wife, of course, uh, is a master and I do deal in uh, that a lot, is that most of us as Indian leaders do not even accept what's happening to you because somewhere we have got this notion in our head that, I need to stand strong, true. I need to stand strong with what's wrong and accepting what you're going through because as a CEO, as a leader of an organization, what you are going through, nobody else is going through. I can give you an example of somebody uh, whose organization I've been working with for the last eight years. This company lost its 40% business overnight. One client that was giving them 40% business. To me, that's a bad strategy. The moment any of my clients gives me more than 15% business, I'm worried. I'm worried. Anything more than 15%, I say, no, I cannot reduce that person's business. I need to increase my business somewhere else. Or maybe somehow my plans on that particular client 
has to be a little low. So 40% business lost overnight. And I was doing a program the next morning there. And when I entered, senior manager walked up to me and said, things bad. And I've been working with the company. Uh, we have a meeting with the CEO. So a couple of us will not be able to join this program. It was a leadership program. We will join you a little later. So fair enough. When they came in during the lunch break, I was just talking to them. I said, how did the meeting go? Of course, don't tell me something which you all discuss, which is confidential. He said, no, I mean, you're part of the team, but of course, something that we can share with you. The CEO walked into the room at 9.45. When everyone settled, his first statement was, I am scared. His first statement was, I am scared. I don't know how are we going to manage the situation. 1,100 people company. I don't know. From where are we going to pay their salaries for the next two months till the time things settle down? I don't know many things. However, I've called all of you to sit, discuss, and see what we can do. Now, I have a question for all of you. How many of us sitting on this, in this room today would have used the statement, I am scared? And how does that project you as a leader? I think that is human. Uh, I think yo, I didn't have to say I'm scared. Goa being a small unit for me, I could at least say that, you know, I'm concerned. And in fact, they came up with the idea. Instead of I said that I don't want to really cut the salary and how much ever I can pay. Then they suggested that, sir, why not adjust the entire leave? Because about 16 days it was closed. After that, we got approval to run because we part of a pharma uh, distribution. Right. So, then uh, the guy said that, sir, all our leave and cash money, you know, like what uh, the balance of the leave, you adjusted towards this. So no need to cut the salary. In a way, yes, it is good and, uh, because it worked in my, to my advantage. If somebody leaves tomorrow, then I can't do anything about it, but yeah. it's okay. But I think it's a partly a win-win situation, Kanan. Yeah. But as you said, you said, I'm concerned. But uh, if you if you like to share, were you fearful or you were just concerned? Because... Feelings, the, the rainbow of feelings is so huge. We don't even realize that we experience more than 140 feelings. But we cannot name more than 14, believe me. Mm. <laughs> and fear is a feeling that we as men in India are not taught. Yeah. Sadly. Sadly. So when I talk about that vulnerability, because the moment you say I'm scared, you also feel that I'm being vulnerable. Listen, I need to be strong. And the CEO of 1100 people company who lost 40% business overnight did not tell people I'm scared and said, okay, let's go home now. No, he said, but let's discuss what can be done. So a lot of people, when I give this example in leadership session, they say, but isn't it creating panic? I said, well, panic was already there. It's not that people didn't know what's happening. Mm. And panic was there. He's a senior management team of 13 people. They knew what had happened overnight. So what we're talking about is being emotionally honest in today's time. And that would allow you to keep your communication channels open. Listen and empathize and be transparent. Yeah. Well, I know transparent is a very, very, uh, I would say heavy word. How much transparent do I need to be? I was talking to someone about being transparent. He said, very frankly, my bottom, and bottom line is not getting affected at all. But I'm telling my team my bottom line is getting affected. What do you do? His bottom line is not getting affected at all. Maybe he said, I may make. 5% more than I had projected. He's into such business. Let us know which business. <laughs> <laughs> Training. <laughs> and that's not me, by the way. <laughs> Training. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm doing two sessions tomorrow, uh, just to give you an idea, two webinars, for a total of four hours, and I'm still making money for a day's fee. So I can do three. Uh, I'm not pushing myself. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, it's Rajesh. I Rajesh. think you have brought up a very good point. Emotionally honest. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to just put it across that uh, my uh, viewers, once you are uh, authentic and emotionally honest, uh, yeah. the other side responds equally well, and uh, you know True. they kind of support you in whatever situations you are in. I mean, I, I kind of you know have that uh, experience as well in. Uh, many organizations where I've worked and I have so now my small startup uh, what I've worked. Very well said on you. So true. I think being emotionally honest, one, gives you an opportunity to say what you're feeling and once it's out of your system, you, you feel all right. Both yeah. And two, as you rightly said, people do reciprocate. Of course, you need to understand your people and I'm sure all of us do believe that 
are, as the concept also says, people are okay. They may have a reason to behave in a particular fashion, but they don't want to harm in general. Most people do not want to harm others. There are always exceptions in the world, which are in small, small percentage. So these are a few things that I'll share with you. So, so that's Madam, about it. Any questions? Yeah. We are running out of time. Yeah. I'm done. I'm yeah, done. Okay. So okay. in fact, before I take questions, uh, here is uh, something that you all can connect with me. You have my number here. You have my email ID. And uh, Ram, uh, would you like me to take questions first and then share with the group what I have for them in terms of what I can offer? 